These are not a performance shoe. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and review on these bad boys right here. This is the Adidas Crazy Infinity. On the box label, it actually says Crazy Infinity 2.5. I don't think you're emphasizing all those eyes properly. I think the eyes are supposed to represent the three stripes. I get it, but it's infinity. The Crazy Infinity 2.5. Thank you for being a friend. But yeah, I, th I think that they're just simply called, at least right now, uh, when you look online, all the retailers, including Adidas, it just simply states Crazy Infinity. I do believe that the 2.5 is alluding to something, which I'll get into a little bit, but what do you think about these boots, man? Please don't ask me. That's all you need to say. Now, like I was saying right from the jump, these are not a basketball shoe. They are not a performance shoe, okay? I know that it, it's in the performance box. The insole says Adidas basketball. They look like a basketball sneaker from the 2000s but it's just an homage it's really just that simple there are performance features in it that I'm sure that will make them playable but again it's not intended for performance so I'm just letting you guys know right from the beginning if you want to play in them I mean go for it but it's not a basketball shoe anyways the shoe itself is paying tribute to a line that Adidas has re-released over and over again that's been dubbed or renamed the crazy like that's it, that's the line. It's the crazy and then there's like the one and then if they were to ever have the balls to release the two, which after releasing these, I don't see why not, but hey, you never know. And then there was a scrapped third model, which is where I think that these fit in between, hence the 2.5. But basically that original line was called the Adidas The Kobe. So there was The Kobe 1, pretty cool. And then there was The Kobe 2. Now after The Kobe 2, Kobe ended up cutting ties with Adidas. He bought himself out of his own contract. He was not happy with the way that the line was going. A lot of people have speculated other things. That's false information. And then we have that sneaker free agency period where he wore all kinds of cool stuff, including these. Whoa until he finally found his home over at Nike. Now again, like I was saying, this is supposed to be kind of like an homage to that original Crazy or the Kobe line. There was a line before the Crazy series. It was originally called the KB series. This is not including his EQT line that he wore. We've already reviewed all of them. So if you want to check out some really old videos that we made that are pretty sh Be our guest. But anyways, as far as these guys go right here, we've got herringbone traction for the win. So again, I can see exactly why so many people assume that this is a basketball shoe. Cause I mean, it looks like it's gonna rip the floors off. But this guy right here is actually paying tribute again to the Adidas Crazy One as well as the two. But if you were to look at the original, the Kobe one, slightly similar outsole, it had a little bit of a different edge to it or not edge, but design. It went from thick to thin. And then they did the same thing on the two and the three, which again, have never retroed. The three actually never even released because that's exactly when Kobe left. But again, we've got that tribute traction right there. Uh, it looks very similar to the crazy one or the Kobe one, whichever one you want to say. At the midfoot, they have a TPU plate for torsion support. Again, confusion because it's not supposed to be a basketball shoe. So why is that there? I don't know, man. I didn't design these. It does offer enough torsional rigidity and everything. So again, if they are playable, it's just that it's not intended as a basketball shoe. I think they're covering their asses just in case somebody hurts themselves with these things. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, we didn't say this was basketball shoes, but that's what we're doing. So, you know, whatever. Now the upper is very similar to the Crazy Series or the Kobe Series, where it almost looks like a foam posit sneaker. Very similar setup where instead of polyurethane, which is what the foam posits are, or foam posit material is polyurethane. It's liquid polyurethane turned into a solid. It's very cool. Anyways, this guy right here is just EVA. So we've got just regular EVA foam as the sidewalls. There's two panels of it, both medial and lateral. The midsole itself is internal, so it's technically a double lasted midsole and that is also EVA foam. The insole is a piece of sh no surprise there. Adidas has some of the worst insoles I think I've ever seen from any brand ever. Luckily the insole is completely removable so you know you could take that out and put in whatever that you might want. I will say though they're very comfortable despite all of that. So if the shoe when I put them on I was like whoa these are cool man. Like they are one of the weirdest sneakers in I don't want to say like quite some time but if, I don't know if I've ever seen something this weird. Like the Yeezy basketball stuff kind of but like even that had its own like flavor like this though like like what era does this belong in? Does it fit in the 2000s? Yes. Does it fit today? Yes. 
it's weird. Now the toe cap is rubber and it reminds me a lot of the shell toes. I think that that was one of the coolest parts about the original, the Kobe line is that it not only paid tribute to Adidas's heritage with the shell toe shoe or the superstars, but it also kind of like brought in like that concept car feel because it was all about the Audi and everything, the, the TT. When you look at it, it's kind of got that like grill on the front and stuff like that. If you were to actually look at the second version of the shoe, that's again what these really remind me of where they they have the more exaggerated shell toe feature and everything still based off of the Audi TT though. And then the laces on the Adidas, the Kobe twos were actually covered up, which was something they were trying to do with this original model here. There's actually samples of the first set of laces where they are covered up. Obviously they decided to go this route, which was uncovering them, which is cool. But then that second model took it just a step further. They're like, F it, man, we're going to cover up these laces, which they did. And then that's where I feel like these fit in between the two and the three, hence the 2.5, I believe, not confirmed, I'm just saying. The Adidas, the Kobe threes, again, scrap sample. The toe actually looks very similar to this. It's just chromed out a little bit because it was the 2000s, everything was chromed. But they also had a full-on enclosure shroud, which was really sick. It wasn't quite like this, where it's a screen mesh with the zipper. They actually used what they were calling the hug system, which uh, obviously was scrapped because the model was scrapped, but they ended up using that hug system in a T-Mac model. I think it was the four or the five, I can't even remember. But anyways, I think that the rubber toe cap looks really cool. It's also incorporating the three stripes on there, which is a slick move. Now this back section right here is also kind of like a rubber, again, kind of a performance feature, but not a performance shoe. Now the shroud system, like I was saying before, is kind of a mixture between what they did in the Kobe twos, as well as what they were going to be doing in the scrapped Kobe threes, but they made it a little bit more modern. It's just a screen mesh, and then they've used fuse on all of the kind of like welding. They hide all of the welding seams and stuff like that with the fuse. They also tape the ankle up with it so that hopefully it doesn't cut you up but it does feel sharp luckily it's underneath the actual internal portions of the shoe all the ankle collars and stuff so i think that was a good move it is very stiff though so when you have it unzipped like that uh, it just kind of sits there almost like it would if it were zipped up so it's got the same kind of look you can actually fold them down which i've done right here and it just takes a little while what i would do is start with the back and fold that down and then roll it around the edges and then it'll give you this look kind of similar to nike's the glove which was a gary payton model but uh uh, not quite as cool, I don't think. I think that this would have been a little bit cooler had it been Lycra, which is like a spandexy type of material, which is what they did use on the original black glove, like the original colorway. The other original colorway was the white one, and that had a stretch leather, which was really, really neat. Doesn't age well, but it was cool. Now, inside of all of this is an actual regular kind of shoe where it's all mesh and regular textile lining and all that stuff. You got Adidas branding on the tongue. The internals actually remind me a lot of this shoe right here, which again is the crazy one or the Kobe one, uh, where if you look at them, it's it's pretty similar. It's not identical or anything, but you can definitely see where they're taking pieces from this shoe and maybe the other two models and then incorporating them all into this shoe. It kind of reminds me actually of uh, another shrouded shoe that was also attached to Kobe. And I really cannot remember what their name was. It had the Kobe 6 bottom. It ended up at out outlets. And then it had the zipper enclosure from the glove because Kobe was a big fan of the glove shoe. And then the internals, I can't even remember. Was it like a Kobe 11? Okay, so there was a Kobe 11 with a shroud, but that's not the shoe I was looking for. Oh, there it is. It's called the Nike Zoom Kobe Icon. That shoe was crazy. Very cool looking, by the way. And just to let you guys know, there is reflective piping underneath the shroud enclosure. You're not going to be able to see it too much when the shroud is up, although right now you kind of can and then also this little back strip right there reflective too pretty cool now as far as the fit is concerned you can do one of two things you can go true to size they do fit true to size however for at least my right shoe you, you know how your feet are not exactly the same size not for everybody but for some people you're just a little bit off like one might be like a quarter of an inch or whatever that's me so my right shoe actually fits a little small so some people might want to go up half a size anyway sound off below and let us know what you think about these in the comment section i would love to hear from you guys thank you so much for being here thank you so much for watching we will catch y'all on the next one so until then have a good one.